We discussed some of the basics of sharing in session one, and I want to go a little more in depth. Once you have your site created, you want to look at the sharing and permissions and change them at any time while you're creating it, it's up for a while, whenever. We go to more, our friend more, and this time we're going to go to sharing and permissions. The sharing and permissions, you could also get to under manage site and click sharing and permissions. This is the link for the site. So if you wanted to give out the link for someone to connect to the site, this is the link that you give them. Who has access? I made it public to the web. Anyone on the internet can find and view. Adams 12, people at Adams 12 can find and edit. And I'm the owner. If I want to change this, I can click on change and change it. If I don't want public, with no sign required, I could say anyone with the link, no sign in required. So that link that I showed you on the page earlier, if you don't want everyone in the world to be able to see it, you could do anyone with this link and send them the link, this link right here. So anyone who has this link can view it. So that's one way of doing it. You also could just, if you're in a Google Apps for Education, you could also just make it to the people in your Google Apps domain. And I'm in the Adams 12, so anyone can find and access it. You can also have even more lockdown people at Adam 12 with the link. So you'd have to be, they'd have to be part of your Google Apps for education, so they'd be a member of your school district in order to be able to view it, and they would also have to have the link. And then private is only specifically people that you grant permission to can see it. So from top down, you're getting more and more and more and more secure. And I'm just making mine back public on the web. And remember to hit save. If you're in, not in a Google Apps for Education account and in just a regular Gmail account, your views will be different. It'll be public on the web and then people that you can invite or people with the link, but you won't have the features about being in the Google Apps for Education domain because you're not in a Google domain. Now, if you want to add people to be editors, down here at the bottom is where you can add people and you can choose them from contacts if you have contacts. So if I wanted, so if you have contacts, they will appear. Now, if you don't have contacts, you can just type in people's email that are not in your contacts. So just say, I'm going to make my husband. Okay, and you put commas in between. Now, you can notify people by email, so you can let them know that they have editing rights. So this is how you'd add your students if you wanted your if you were giving them access to the site. And remember, you can't just give page permissions. You give them site permissions, sharing and permissions. They are for the site, not just for the page. So you can change can edit, can view. So remember, it depends on what you lock down up here if you want to make someone invite someone just to be able to view it. So if you lock it down up here in terms of like where we were looking here, if you make it more locked down than public and anyone can view, you can pick who you want to view it. If you want to add a message letting them know you have been invited to edit my site, you can put in a message. Do you have to put in a message? No. And then you would just click share and save. And if you don't want them to get an email message, like you know you're working on this with someone and you know you're going to share it, you can uncheck this box as well. A couple of things to remember about sharing. You can only send out invitations to 50 people, individuals at a time, for sharing. Now, you could share it again if you had more people you want to share with. So know there is a limit when you're inviting people to share. Once you've shared with specific people and given them editing rights if that's what you want, they will appear in the list. Just so you know, when you share with someone that's outside of your domain, if you're working in a Google Apps for Education account, you will get a message saying, hey, this person isn't in Google Apps domain, is that okay with you? And you can just say okay. Once they have rights, you can go in and make them an owner, which you probably don't want to do, or change it just to viewing rights. If you want to get rid of them, all you have to do is click the box and 
you have made changes that you need to save, so you can click Save. Another thing to know is if you have Google Groups actually set up, you can invite an entire group, but you'd have to have Google Groups set up, and I don't think, well, there are some Google Groups set up for here. I don't know if it's going to work. So here's a BTC group. This would add all the people in this Adams 12 BTC group. I could say they could edit. I could say they could view. Now, if you have it public on the web for anyone to view, you don't need to just invite them and can view unless it's the way you want to notify them via email instead of saying an email out. So that's up to you. So just so you know, when you're choosing people, you can say edit or view here, and then you can always change them up here as well. And that's pretty much the basics of sharing. And so when you're thinking about sharing and publishing out to the web, the reason I had protect is how do you want to protect your site? If you don't want anybody outside of the school district, you have your different features. But remember, if you're in Google Apps and you're just in regular Google, you're not going to have people in Adams 12 or with Link or people in Adams 12 because you're not in a Google Apps for Education account. So just take these things into consideration when you're choosing your visibility.